time. I'm doing it again. You're doing what? Leaning on you, crying on your shoulder. That's what I'm here for. No, um, you're, you're here for Lizzie. Well, I'm here for you too, Beth. Stop this. We have known each other way too long and been through too much to act like this with each other, all right? If you need my shoulder, it's yours. That's really sweet, but, um... But what? When you say things like that, it makes me long for the way things used to be, and I know they can't be that way again. case, aren't I? When you're cold to me, it hurts, and when you're like this, it hurts more. Well, it's because it's a weird, stupid situation, and and it isn't just Lizzie. It's, it is you and me, and... It's you and Harley. Yeah. You know, it would be a lot easier if I could just say, Beth, I love you. I don't care about Harley. Or I, or I love Harley. I don't care about you. But I can't. I can't say either one of those things. <clears throat> I guess you know what it's like to be damned if you do and damned if you don't. Let's just concentrate on Lizzie right now. All right, let's get through this. And you know, whatever happens, happens. Are you saying that we could possibly? No, I have to really stop doing that. No, you know what you have to stop doing? You have to, you have to stop making rules for yourself and for me. I, you know what I want you to do? I want you to be honest with me, and I will be honest with you. It may not be what you want to hear or what I want to hear, but it's what we have to do if we're going to get through this, okay? I think it's our only chance. You think you can do that? Are you with me? More than I wish. Well, Dr. Bradford's gonna be here soon. Um, <clears throat> I'll get dressed. Okay. I, I just bring her up here when she gets here. Are you okay? Fine. Fine. Okay. I'll see you in a few minutes. After all that you and I have been through, why do you still feel that you have to say that kind of thing to me? Why? What's the big deal? Right? Lots of people give their kids up for adoption. Oh, Dinah. No muss, no fuss. It's nice and neat. The only trouble is, and this may be hard for you to understand, but not everybody can give their child up as easily as you did. It wasn't easy for me to give you up. It's really too bad there's not a carnival in town. Maybe I Dinah, could dump it there. stop! When are you going to stop blaming everything that's wrong in your life on your past? You tell me. You may not have wanted your baby, but I want mine. And in case you forgot, Hart is the father of this baby, too, and he would never consent to an adoption. Have, have you talked to him about that? No! God, you know, and I'll tell you something else. Hart and his bimbo girlfriend are not going to raise my child. A child needs both of its parents. I have never, ever heard you express an interest in children. I have never heard you say you wanted to have children. Well, I do. Look, this is the oldest trick in the book, the oldest trick. You get pregnant by a man, and you tie the man to you, and it's not fair. It's not fair, it's not right. Not for you, not for the baby, not for Hart. Unlike you really care about me. Would I be having this incredibly unpleasant conversation with you if I didn't? Well, then spare yourself the trouble. Honey. You are fixated. You are fixated on Hart, and you've made up some kind of fairy tale. You really believe that Hart is going to, he's going to stop loving Cassie. He, he's going to come to your rescue and, and build some kind of perfect little house with a perfect little... You know what? That is enough. You. That is enough. I have had enough. Now, 
negative vibes, me and my baby, for one day. I want you to go. Get out. Well, goodbye, mother. I am not leaving until you hear me out. Well, I'm not listening to anything else you have to say. What do you think is going to happen to you if Hart marries Cassie? You're going to be alone with an infant. Get out, mother. Get out. All right. I will. If you will answer one question honestly. What? Do you really not see that Hart doesn't want to be with you? He wants to be with Cassie. I want Hart, and I am going to have him. I can have any man that I want, okay? Including your husband. It's not enough that Lizzie has to live with Carl's death. Now her friends are ostracizing her because of it. <sighs> Children can be so cruel. But in most cases, it goes back to the parents. Well, that may be, but we have to figure out what to do about Lizzie. I've been thinking about that. I'd like to send her to a camp that I'm affiliated with in Oak Ridge. Excuse me, Lizzie is falling apart and you want to send her to camp? Ah, but this is a very special camp for children who have suffered trauma. Lizzie will be able to work with me as well as with other top-notch therapists. And she'll have a lot of interaction with other children, but in an environment that well, it's removed from where the incident occurred. She'll start to feel accepted again, which is important. And then when she comes home, well, it's just hope things are a little more normal here. Uh, I really value your opinion, Dr. Bradford, but I, I just don't feel that I can be separated from Lizzie right now. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Look, she's the doctor. And you, what do we have to lose, Beth? You said the nightmares are getting worse. Maybe what she needs is to get away from here for a while. This camp might be the thing. Okay. <clears throat> but is it possible that I could stay at a hotel nearby? Or... Actually, I was about to suggest that Mr. Spaulding take Lizzie to Oak Ridge alone. She needs time with her father. Philip's been living here. Uh, he's... Ah, uh, but, but being in the house is not the same. On a deeper level, Lizzie is still suffering from the trauma of, of the divorce that you had. Giving her some real time with her father would go a long way to making her feel more secure, safer. Uh, that makes a lot of sense to me. Maybe she's right. Well, oh, I suppose so. Good, then I'll make the arrangements as soon as Lizzie and I have had our session. Okay. Thanks, Dr. Thank you. She will be all right. I will take very good care of her. I know you will. And, you know, maybe this is good in more ways than one. Lizzie needs time with you. And I need time without you. I just want to start getting used to it. Call my office. Harley, just the person I want to talk to. Gross, you're in such a good mood today. Oh, does it show? <laughs> Hit you right between the eyes. <laughs> well, Blake came back yesterday, and I didn't realize how much I had missed her. Oh, Not a lot of fun to be on your own, you know. I'm sorry, did uh, I say something wrong? No, you didn't say anything wrong. Stop with the pitying looks. <laughs> I have officially entered the breakup zone. The what? You know, that place where only couples exist, and you're the only single person in sight? where every song you hear is about the one that you lost. Your friends are constantly casting you these pitying glances and trying to set you up with every man who's single and straight and breathing. I have not done no, that. No, but you will. You know, my life is not over, okay? I have another 60 years or so ahead of me, and I've lived just fine with that Philip up to a small part of my life, and I will continue to be just fine. He's not the only man out there. The end. Gee, I think I believe her. Uh, yes. <laughs> I am sorry to hear about you and Philip. Thank you. I'll live. Then you're better than I am. If I lose Blake, I think I've lost everything. 